Uh, hi there, David. How are you? All right? Not too bad yourself? Yeah, yeah, keeping okay. A little bit damp, but uh, a little bit rainy, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you've got to put up with that, I guess. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, well, thank you very much for speaking to me. I'm sorry if I'm a little bit late. Well, I'm it's more or less noon, oh, isn't fine, it? No, you're absolutely fine. Um, I had to had to post some paperwork. Um, yeah, I, I've been in my spare time looking at the Revelation, its grand climax at hand. It's certainly a very interesting book. All right. Yeah. Um, it seems to really pivot. Uh, I'm looking at page 184. It seems to pivot around the date 1919. It seems to make yes, the claim. That's right. 1914 and 1919. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it seems to make the claim that Jesus chose the Watchtower Society in 1919. Um, but then on the sort of other side, Satan chose the sort of religions and governments of this world, which I'm a bit uneasy with. Um, it, it, although it says 1919 for that, um, implying that the League of Nations is the seventh, is the eighth, sorry, is the eighth head of the satanic wild beast. The League of Nations actually came into effect in 1920, not 1919. But the League of Nations was planned in 1919 at the Paris Peace Convention. So That's right, yeah. it, it seems to really pivot about 1919. The, the claims made on page 184 that Jesus chose the Watchtower Society in 1919. And on the other hand, you have the governments of this world who... Um, well, the, I'm not happy. The book seems to imply that the governments and the religions of this world were really chosen by the devil in 1919, or have I got that wrong, or is it before then he chose them? It, no, no. Well, basically, he didn't choose the Watchtower Society personally, but basically... Sorry, could you say that again? You were breaking up? Can you say that again? Oh, sorry. Yeah, basically, basically, he didn't choose the Watchtower Society per se. Basically, it was a faithful group of people who wanted to stay faithful to the Scriptures. And then after, they, they didn't get everything right to start with from 1879 through, you know, there was times while we were still studying the scriptures, they were still trying to figure out, you know, what was right and what was wrong, was Christmas right, was birth, you know, all these type of things. And um, by 1919, they were cleansed, as it were, so there's this period of cleansing between 1914 and 1919, and at that point, uh, you know, the Bible shows that God would then set up what he called a faithful slave who would provide the spiritual food on the earth at this time. Mm -hmm. So that's why the 1919 date is quite pivotal because that's where it all kicked on from there. And, and what about the other side? The You know, it talks about the seventh head of the satanic wild beast being Anglo-America. I'm not happy about yeah. that. And the eighth head that comes out of the seventh is the United Nations. It seems that 1919 is a sort of pivotal date for, well, the devil's side of things also. I don't want to read stuff into the book, but is that what the book is saying? Because I'm kind of a bit shocked. Uh, yeah, it, does. it comes as a shock to you, but... Basically, yeah, as you say, the book of Revelation, it shows that the, um, at that point, it says Babylon the Great has fallen. So Revelation talks about religion in general, false religion, as Babylon the Great. Because many of the teachings in religion these days do stem from ancient Babylon, like the cross and things like that. So what it says is 1919, um, I think it's in Revelation 18, Robert, um, it says she has fallen, Babylon the Great has fallen. So at that point in time, religion started to lose its grip on society, if you want to call it that. It had this powerful grip right through the Dark Ages, etc., the Spanish Inquisition, all that stuff. Uh, um, uh, I and mean, by 1919, they started to lose their the grip on and the hold on people. And from then on in, we've seen the churches empty. You know, less attendances, less churches, less people go, less people like yourself who have a faith, you know. Um, so that is, that is the idea behind that, basically. Well, I can look at this in in a moment, in individual pages in the book that refer to this in a moment. At the, at the moment, what I'm trying to do is get an overview. So what happened in 1919? You've said that... So what Yes. On what both sides of things, God's side and the devil's side. Yeah, basically, in 1919, God set up or cleansed his people, as it were, the true people, and he cleansed them to a point where they could represent him rightfully. So the beliefs and everything were all sorted out, and the truth was there, if you want to call it that. And at that point, from then on in, 
um, God's organisation on earth would kick on and become bigger and stronger and the good news would be preached out the earth as a you're, you're, that, you're, you're, you're breaking up a bit. I, I find it hard to hear oh, sorry, you. You're breaking up a bit. Um, so, the, uh, basically, at that point, God's organisation on earth would kick on and go to another level, which was what we have seen. Um, you know, there was only a few thousand in 1919, and today there's 8.6 million Jehovah's Witnesses. And the other side of things? The other side of things, we've seen religion generally um, losing its grip on people even in, I mean, you know yourself in this country it's now very secular isn't it that's not my question my question is related to 1919 what what did the devil do in 1919 all oh, right sorry yes yeah well revelation 12 talks about the war in heaven and the devil at that point was cast out of heaven where he'd been living down to the vicinity of the earth. So what we've seen since then... In the year 1919? In the year 1919? Yes, yeah, so the war okay. in heaven lasted between 1914 and 1918. Or 1914, 1919. And then the devil was cast out, so what we see is an increase in lawlessness, etc. since then. So that's what happened to the devil then. The devil and the demons are now in the vicinity of the earth, but not in heaven. And what about the governments of the world and the religions of the world in 1919? At that point, well, they would just carry on as they did, you know. Um, but they would, the religion would begin to lose its uh, power, um, which we've seen happen. The governments mm. have just continued as, as mm. is, you know, with the under the devil's control. Um, this is so vague and non-Pacific, um, it's, it's very difficult for me to follow anything you're saying because you're not really speaking in Pacifics, you're just generalising, talking in general non-Pacific terms. Um, yeah, so, perhaps... so what... OK. Yeah, so what is it you want... I'm just trying to get your angle. Maybe it, maybe it would be best to actually read passages from the book and get a Pacific response. I mean, listening to you, I could be listening to a Mormon or a Christadelphian or a member of the Way International, because <laughs> they say exactly the same thing. You know, on some other date, uh, Jesus or Jehovah or Yahweh chose us and the devil chose all the religions of the world and the governments of the world. They just got a different date, but they say exactly the same thing well, as you. and It's all devil, non-Pacific. The devil controls what he controls. Right, he right, has, right, right. Well, what does he control? That's one of my questions. Uh, basically, this whole planet, brother. So, he controls the religions of this world. He controls the governments of this world. Uh, 1 John 5 tells us that uh, the devil is the ruler of this world. When Jesus was tempted by the devil, back in the year 30 CE, 29 CE, and he was tempted, the devil offered him the kingdoms of the world, but Jesus didn't say to him, well, how can you do that? You don't own them. So that proved that the devil was the ruler of the world even back then. And that hasn't changed, and it won't change until God steps in arm again. Mm. Um, well, there's so much that you've said there. I mean, I could say that Jesus said in John 16, 33, I have overcome the world, and he did that through his death, burial, and resurrection death on the tree and his burial and yeah, resurrection so he could have um uh, you know satan offered him the kings of, the, of this world but he decided to overcome satan uh, and take satan's rulership away from him through his Which death burial and resurrection according to john john sixteen thirty three. I, I um Perhaps it's best if we look at Pacifics in the book. The other thing is you quoted 1 John 5, was it 1 John 5, 19? I forgot that right. I'm thinking off the top of my head there. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked yes. one. Yeah. Well, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that verse has got nothing whatsoever to do with governments or religious organisations or, or groups at all. Absolutely well, no, well, nothing. Because what is the whole world? What does it consist of? It, well, I was, I was about to say, if you read from verse 18, the context clearly 
is individuals. It's not talking about the Baptist church or the Methodist church or the Jehovah's Witness religion or the Mormon religion. It's not talking about the British government or the French government or the German government. It's about individuals. So 1 John 5, 18, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. The word does not sin, the verb means to practice sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God. So there John is identifying himself with believers okay and the contrast is the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one so if he's simply talking about individuals it's, it's got nothing to do with you you can't use this verse as a sort of battering ram proof text that every government of the world including the british government is of the devil or that every religious group other than your own is of the devil i mean would you well, say I, that no no we don't say we don't say the devil worshipers. we say this whole planet individuals non-believers like you say there, the believers are the previous verses. The non-believers in this world today are under the devil's control. Yeah, that, but that's exactly yeah. what the verse is saying. Yeah. So this has got nothing to do with the British government or the Anglican Church. I used to go to an Anglican Church. You you can't quote this verse. Say, we would say that they're non-believers because they're not teaching the truth. Well, all right. D do you believe that Jesus Christ became the Almighty God at his resurrection? No, that's not in the Bible. Is, is that paganism? Is that false? It's false teaching that came from Babylon. The Babylon gods had a trinity. Oh, hold up. Let's, let's, let's just stick to one thing at a time. I said to you very specifically, do you believe that Jesus Christ became the Almighty God at his resurrection? No. no. Right. But you taught that. You taught that 100 no. years ago. In, in the book, which I've got, Berean Bible Teacher's Notes, it says on page 454 that Jesus Christ became the Almighty God at his resurrection. That's... Yes, that, that's what... I like that back, what we could I finish? Could, could I just yes, finish? Um, also, the Finnish Mystery, published in 1917, says the same thing, yep. that Christ is yes. the Almighty God, although the context is he becomes the Almighty God at his resurrection. It's clearer in Berean yes. Bible Teacher's Manual. Um, okay, no, that's the, that's the, could, I, could I finish? Um, it, it says that on page 15 and page 240, and there's also a watchtower yeah. um, that the Finnish mystery is quoting from, from the 1890s, I forget the reference. But in this watchtower, it says again, Jesus Christ became the Almighty God yeah. when he yeah. resurrected from the dead. Now, that's not the Trinity. The Trinity teaches that Christ has eternally been the Almighty God. And, you know, you're welcome to teach anything you like, and Jehovah's Witnesses are, uh, are welcome to teach yeah. anything they like. There's the freedom of expression to do that. But yeah. that is what the facts, the evidence, teach that you were teaching 100 years ago. You taught that yes, Jesus Christ that now, became the Almighty God at his resurrection. We don't teach that now. And you worshipped Christ until 1953. It was on the 1st of January, 1954. I went on to the website, jw.org. And you go to yeah. the 1st of January, Watchtower, 1954, and in that Watchtower, I forget the page number, they do away with the worship of Jesus. So that's what you were teaching in 1919. Now, why would Jesus choose an organization that teaches Jesus Christ became the Almighty God? Because and they worship Jesus Christ until 1953. Why would Jesus choose that organization if it's false? No, we still worship Jesus as God's son. No. No, the the reference in the Finnish mystery, page fifteen and two forty. Yeah, but, uh, but like I was saying to you earlier, Robert, during those periods of years between nineteen fourteen and nineteen nineteen, there was a big refining process. And a lot of it happened then. Some subsequent to that, but a lot of it then. And during that refining process, teachings such as Hellfire, Christmas, birthdays, uh, um, Trinity were rooted out. I'm, so I'm not interested. You would find that that wouldn't be there. The yeah. wasn't there. Yeah, I'm not interested. Okay, I'm not interested. I'm asking you one specific question. It, it says in Berea's Bible Teacher's Manual, published in 1909 by the International Bible Students, that's the name before you became known as Jehovah's yeah, yeah. Witnesses, yeah. Uh, a commentary on Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, OK, it says all power is given to rule in heaven and on earth. Oh, yeah, that's correct. Christ, that's correct. Could, 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 could you let me, would you allow me to finish? 
Christ has been almighty only since his resurrection. So they're saying that Christ is the almighty God. That's also in a watchtower from the 1890s. I forget the reference. And it's yeah, in the Finnish mystery. Could I finish? Over. Could I finish? It's in the Finnish mystery, page 15 and page 240. So I'm puzzled. If Jesus was looking for an organization that taught the right things, why did he choose the watchtower when you taught at the time that Christ became the almighty God at his resurrection and you worshipped him until 1953? Why wouldn't Jesus choose the Unitarians or the Christadelphians? They don't worship Jesus Christ and they don't believe that he became the almighty God. Right, well, firstly, I would need to check that one out myself. But secondly, the reason for choosing that was for those that were honest half of looking for the truth. And many other religions, I would say all other religions, have another motive or an agenda there. And it's not to find the truth. It's to get as many people in their doors as possible. It's to have control. It's whatever reason they have. And it's not to find the truth. It's not to worship God in the way that he approves. It's to worship God in the way that they would like to do it, uh, as we see today with many people. And what God was looking for was honest, humble-hearted ones who through time would be willing to change with his direction. And that's what's happened over the years. We have had a few things that haven't been right. And we admit that. We openly admit that. Uh, uh, right. Where? where we, we, right. We, we can can I... Where have you admitted? So, so at that point, it's the attitudes, the humility right. he's looking for, not necessarily exact facts. And what, personally, I don't care what we believed in 1909. I just care what we believe right now in 2020. But, but will what you believe now, let's say you live another 50 years, yeah. will what you believe now be exactly the same in 50 years' time? Well, the, the, well... The, or will the beliefs change? I'm pretty sure there'd be nothing that would change my faith. But in the book of Proverbs, it talks about the light getting brighter as time goes on. No, so, do you no, know it doesn't. Do you no, know it, it doesn't. doesn't. Give you all the light at once? No, no, no. Proverbs four eighteen says the path of the righteous is illuminated yes, by the light. It's the path of the righteous well. that gets brighter. It's not light. There's other scriptures as well to show that the, the knowledge would increase at the time of the end. There's another verse that says that as well. So that verse has got what, nothing whatsoever to do with process. that. That verse about knowledge will increase in the end times has got nothing whatsoever to do with with doctrine, Christian Christian doctrine. Look, oh, it does. It does. All right. You you said that the Watchtower has apologised for its past mistakes. Yeah, we're quite open. The Watchtower will say we used to think this. However, an adjustment in understanding is this. Could you? It's quite open about yeah. that. Would you be able to show me in a watchtower, maybe you get back to me and we, we speak again, where they have apologised for teaching at one time that Jesus Christ became the almighty God and for worshipping both the Father and the Son? Because the watchtower, you see, it, it's got charters. And until the mid-1950s, the watchtower charter, I've got the 1945 charter, on page two it says that this society was set up for the worship of Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. No, no, it was changed in the 1950s. Jehovah, no, Jehovah no. is the Almighty God, and Jesus is a mighty God, as Isaiah says. No, you're not, and, um, you're, not, you're not listening to what I'm saying. You're, you're, you're jumping in, but you're not listening. Uh, let me go through it again, David. I said that they taught until the 1950s that the Watchtower Society was set up for the worship of both Jehovah God and Jesus Christ, meaning the Father and the Son. And I've got yeah. that in the 1945 charter, page two. Mm -hmm. In the 1950s, they did away with the worship of Jesus. And they said from the, about the 19, mid 50s, late, mid late 50s onwards, the charters were changed to we, the Watchtower Society was set up for the worship of Jehovah God, meaning the Father. They no longer worshipped the Son. No, we do still worship. Just the emphasis is on Jehovah. So you worship Jesus Christ? We worship Jesus Christ as the Son of God, yes, 100%. Okay, okay, and you believe... So that, so that hasn't changed. Um, it's just, there might be, and, you and know, you... people might pick up on terminology and things like that, but they're never the same person. 
worship him for the position that he is in, and that is king of the kingdom since 1914. And you believe that Christ is not the Father? Correct. Yes. But you worship the Father and you also worship the Son, is that correct? Have I got that right? Yeah, in that position. So we don't worship him as the Almighty God. But you used to. What I'm saying is you used to worship Jesus as the Almighty God. And I was hoping you would show me some watched out article where they've apologised for that. Where they've rescinded that belief, they've admitted that they were wrong and they've apologised. Could you, could you do that for me? Well, I, thought, I thought you said you found that. I, th I think we need to listen to each other. Go, th go through it again. What, what, have you, what have you said? You uh, said you, you found the watch there in 1953, you said that had changed. In the 1st of January, 1954, Watchtower, I forget the page number, they okay. said that they don't worship Jesus Christ. They only worship the Father. So I, I'm puzzled. Uh, let me... Let me um, I don't have the internet on this. So I've got my laptop in front of me. But what yeah. I do have is I've got scans. So if you can be patient with me, I can go to the 1954 Watchtower... I do find this very interesting. Why, why, do, why do you do all this research? Because it's absolutely fascinating. Right, OK. Um, it's 1st of January, 1954, Watchtower, page 31. Consequently, right. since the scriptures teach that Jesus Christ is not a Trinitarian co-person with God the Father, but is a distinct person, the Son of God, the answer to the above question must be that no distinct worship is rendered to Jesus Christ now glorified in heaven. Our worship is to go to Jehovah God. So... Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. But you've just said you worship Jesus Christ. A little while yeah, ago, five should... minutes ago, you said you worship both the Father and you worship the Son. Well, we show... It depends how you view the word worship. How would you define it? Don't ask me a question, mate. I'm, be honest with me. Now, come on. Don't play games. This, this, is, this is why I gave up attending church. Religious people just play games with you. They double no, talk, they double you. speak, they don't give you straight answers. You told me five minutes ago that you worship the Son, right. Jesus Christ, as yeah, well as the I'm, Father. I, what, I'm, what I mean by that, right, and I'll define that exactly as pointing out, Robert. We don't worship Jesus as a God, but he is a distinct person, the Son of God, OK? So, our, worship purely, our worship purely goes to Jehovah God, but we worship Jehovah through and in the name of Jesus. Does that make sense? All right. Well, thank you for clarifying that for me. I, I, I appreciate you, maybe you I, doing maybe that. Maybe I did put it off. OK. All right. Well, I'm yeah, sorry if I was a little bit harsh. I, I no, don't, no, I no, don't no, mean no, to be. Yeah, fine. Um, uh, no, I'm maybe not put it across clearly, but that's, you know, it's kind of reverence for his position. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Mm, OK. All so right. We worship God through Jesus, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Well, well, hello to you, yeah. OK. And um, you are aware, because I've been at JW.org, the people at the carts have told me to go to JW.org, so I've been going there regularly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, your insight in the scriptures, which is the Encyclopedia of the Bible, published by the Watchtower? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, volume 1, page 126, under the heading Apollyon, it says that Jesus Christ... The glorified Jesus Christ is Apollyon who comes up out of the bottomless pit. And I was kind of a bit shocked, because Apollyon, you see, is a name for the devil. Yeah, to be honest, I would need to check that one yeah. out myself. Probably. Fine, <laughs> fine. No, that's, that's, that's fine. You can, I'll leave that with you. You get back to me on that. That's volume one of the Insight book, page 126. Yeah, yeah. If you scribble it down, yeah. we can talk about that some other time. Um, Perhaps it's best if I just refer to two or three passages in the Revelation book and then I've taken up enough of your valuable time. Thank you. Oh, yes, I know, yes. um, on page 172 and 173, well, it starts at 171, yeah. chapter 26, God's sacred secret, its glorious climax. And yeah. 172... Paragraph 5, the trumpet blast of the seventh angel was reflected in the highlights of the Bible Students' Convention in Detroit, Michigan, July to August 1928, and it, it goes on um, in paragraph 5. You go to the next page, which I'm looking at, and there's a picture of seven angels with trumpets, and then it says the highlights of Jehovah's trumpet-like proclamations, that's page 173, 
and it talks about the Cedar Point Convention in 1922 going through to the Detroit Michigan Convention in 1928. Okay. Um, it's saying that the seven trumpets of the Book of Revelation happened in the 1920s. And as far as I understand the book, the reasoning is the Bible talks in the book of Revelation about times, in plural, time, singular, and half yeah, a time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It talks about 42 months, and it talks about 1,260 days. Yes. So all of those time periods would be seen as three and a half years. So when Judge Rutherford was released from prison in 1919, yes. you count three and a half years after that, and you come to more or less the exact date of the Cedar Point Convention in Ohio. Okay. And so that's the proof or the evidence, because it was happened to be three and a half years after Judge Rutherford's release from prison. I don't know if it's to the day or not. Um, okay. This is the evidence that the first of the seven trumpets mentioned in the Book of Revelation happened in 1922, and the last trumpet last was in 1928. So the seven okay. trumpets of the book of Revelation happened in the 1920s, simply because your first convention was three and a half years after Judge Rutherford's release from prison. Okay. I, because I think it goes that if you count from November 1914 to 1918, I think it's May, um, June, May, June, July, that sort of time, that's three and a half years. And that's when Judge Rutherford was put in prison, more or less. It's roughly three and a half years. Okay. Then you had a gestation period of nine months. He was in period for nine months. So it's like a, a woman giving birth to a child because it was nine months. Okay. Then he came out of prison and three and a half years. So that's the other three and a half years. Three and a half years after that, you have the Cedar Point Convention, which was the first trumpet of the Book of Revelation. Now, I've spoken to somebody at the cart who looked into this and they said that this belief about the nine month gestation has been done away with because a 2013 watchtower, um, I think it's July, I can't quite remember the reference, um, okay. but I do remember it's footnote six. It says that they've done away with Jesus doing an inspection work from 1918 to 1919, this nine month gestation period that's been done right. away with now. Okay. Now the searching is that Jesus did a, a searching work, an, in, an investigation and a cleansing work from 1914 to 1919. Yeah, it is. It is complicated. And I had to get my head around this and read it several times. But maybe yeah. if you get back to me, my second question is, is page 173. These seven trumpets are this. Uh, did the seven trumpets of the Book of Revelation happen in the 1920s? I think they did. I need to double check that for you. Um, all right, I don't want to name yeah. the to the Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Plus, what yeah. evidence do you have for that, really? Because, you see, anyone could say this. The Mormons could say that we had seven district meetings in the 1980s. That's the seven yeah. trumpets of the Book of Revelation. You know, the local Pentecostal yeah, I, churches yeah. could say, well, we've got seven churches in, in, in Aberdeen and they're the seven churches of the book of Revelation and yeah, yeah, they give the seven perfect. trumpets. Yeah, yeah, Anyone yeah. can yeah. just read their stuff into the Bible, you see. So um, I'll leave yeah. that for you to get back to me. The third thing would be the infamous harlot. That's chapter 33 on page 235. Yes. Um, I'll read from the end of paragraph two. And it, it is very interesting, but... I kind of was a bit shocked because when I did attend church, I went to an Anglican church. We read, yep. however, that by her spiritualistic practice, all the nations were misled. This makes it clear that the great harlot must be a worldwide religious entity. Which religious yes. entity? Is she the Roman Catholic Church, as some have maintained, or is she all of Christendom? No, she must be even larger than these if she is to mislead all the nations. She is, in fact, yes. the entire world empire of false religion. So... I think I understand it. Everyone who's not a Jehovah's Witness, every religion other than Jehovah's Witness is seen as the false religion and therefore the harlot or the whore of Babylon. I think I've got that right. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Within the harlot or the whore of Babylon, 
you have a subdivision which is Christian Christendom, which is all the yes. Protestant and Catholic churches. Yes. Now, I used to go to an Anglican church. Would the head of the Anglican church, uh, the leaders and the head of the Anglican church, be a part of this Christendom? Yes. Even though you claim it's controlled by the devil or influenced by the devil? Yeah, well, if you leave it to the harlots, you're controlled by the devil's operation, if you will. Well, the head of the Anglican Church is Her Majesty the Queen, and I, I respect the Queen, so I'm kind of a bit shocked at that, you know? Yeah, no, we respect her as well, because she is, uh, you know, in relative position to us, she's a ruler, etc., so we respect her for that, but... But yeah, the book is well. not saying very respectful things about Her Majesty the Queen, because she's the head of the Anglican Church, she's the head of the British government. On page 235, you say all of the churches of Christendom are of the devil, including the Anglican Church, where she's the head of the Anglican yes. Church, so she can't be excluded from that. It's kind of it's kind of a little insulting, David, you know, I'm I'm not happy. Well, it might seem insulting, but it's just sometimes I hate to sound blunt, but it truth sometimes hurts. But um you know, she is the head of that church that is talked about as part of that harlot, you know, and it just happens she could choose not to be. It's up to her. It's her choice. Mm. Well, I I disagree with you over that. Um, I think there's lots no, of I Anglicans. No, I, I certainly think there's Anglicans who are wishy-washy people, um, but I do believe there are some good, sincere, genuine, wonderful Christian people in the Anglican Church. Oh, I um, think, yeah, we're not talking about individuals, per se. No, I, I, no, no, I wasn't asking you... No, I did not ask you about individual people. I was talking about the, the office of the head of the Anglican Church because Her Majesty yeah. the Queen holds the office of the head of the Anglican Church. And if you claim the Anglican Church is of the devil, then surely the head of the Anglican Church would be complicit in that alleged crime yeah. or sin that you are alleging. Can, can you understand that? Yes. And yeah. that is what the book is saying, isn't it? Yes, and Jesus in his day was not afraid to talk about those in the rulership who were out of line. Um, you yeah. know, and Sometimes it just needs a bit of courage, but some people don't like it, and okay. that's why we'll get persecuted at you know. All right. Well, look, thank you for being um, um, clear about that. I appreciate it. My next question is page 252. Okay. And this chapter is chapter 35, Executing Babylon the Great. Yeah. And it's talking about the political aspect of the harlot or the whore of Babylon. Okay. Um, down the middle of page 252, it says the succession of seven world powers. Egypt, yes. Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, Anglo-America. I think everyone, more or less, would agree with the first six heads. Uh, lots of yep. different people have come to lots of different opinions about the book of Revelation. But one thing almost everyone can agree on is that the sixth head is Rome. Uh, Revelation 18, if I could read it... Uh, no, no. Yeah, Revelation 18, 17, verses 9 and 10. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. So yeah. mountains representing political governmental rule. I think everyone would agree. They might change the order a little bit, but m most people would agree, yeah, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece are the f yeah. probably the first five heads. They might change the order yes. a little bit, but um, most, almost all biblical scholars would agree with that. And when it says one is, there are seven kings, five have fallen, one is, that has to be Rome. Rome has to be yes, the sixth because head. At that time, when, when John wrote that, it was Rome. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, he couldn't be writing about the Incas or the Aztecs or the Japanese <laughs> or the Chinese government Absolutely. or the Japanese government. It's That's obviously right. wrong. Yeah, yeah. OK, well, we agree on that. What I'm not happy with is the seventh head because it says Anglo-America at the bottom of the page for the seventh head. Yes. There's a picture of the Statue of Liberty next to the American flag and the picture of the Houses of Parliament next to the British flag. Once yeah. again... I'm not talking about individuals. We can both respect individuals. I'm talking about the office. This seems to be, to me, an attack on the office of the president's, uh, uh, presidency of the United States, an attack upon the office of the crown of England. 
because it's basically saying that these seven heads are seven satanic heads of the satanic wild beast and the seventh satanic head of the satanic wild beast is Anglo-America meaning the British yeah. and the American governments which has to include the head of state of Britain and America and again I'm you know I respect you know Mr Trump and Her Majesty and I, I'm not happy with that yeah, well, some people wouldn't, Robert. We just have to expect that. That's what the Bible says. It's not us saying that. The Bible says that. You can work it out through the Anglo American or Pirate Church to work all that out. What, as well. Sorry, what does the yeah. Bible say about the Anglo American world power? Then it will come to the end. It will the last world power before I'm again. But does it say that it's the seventh head of the satanic world beast? I mean, that's what yes. this book is but, saying, isn't it? You have, to link, you, know, you have to link it up with their prophecy of Daniel as well, about the image of the world. Yeah, but the book of Daniel does not mention Anglo, Britain or America at all. There's no reference to Britain or America in the book of Daniel. No, but you can work it out from the clues that are there. Right. And by working that out, those clues out, do, is this book saying that the Anglo-America, meaning the British and the American governments, including the head of state of both, are of the devil? Yes, it always. Okay, well... It always... Every, every government, if the devil controls this planet, every government is controlled by the devil, whether they like it or not, whether they would... Including the British every, government and including the head of state of Britain, the Crown. Everyone, every single one. Including Britain? That, yes, that's why we don't vote. And that's why you don't serve on jury service, isn't it? Because you think that the courts... Uh, uh, somehow under the influence no. of the crown, which no, is under the influence of the devil. No, we can't serve. We can't serve if we want. It's a personal choice. Yeah, but you don't, do you? We do tend to, but some some would. Some that doesn't bother them. Um, it's no, we, we completely agree with the crown jury service. It's that is justice. Uh, Roman thirty one subjects yourself to the superior authority, which is the government of this world. So we completely respect that. We're good citizens. We pay yeah, taxes. We obey the law. Yeah, but you've just demonised. But you've just demonised every government. Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, I do beg your pardon. No, it was me. I interrupted you. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Carry on. Um, but you have demonised every government. You said every government is is of the devil, including the British government. I'm, I'm not happy with that. You know. No, we're not seeing the people are necessarily demonised. No, 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 I'm not asking you about was, individuals. I'm uh, asking you about the office. Yeah. I'm asking you about the office yeah. of the Presidency of the United States and the Crown of England. Because you, this book is making the claim that the Crown of England and the Presidency of the United States, who run the British government and run the American government, they're the head of state of both countries, they are of the devil, they're the seventh satanic head of the satanic wild beast, Anglo-America, yeah. and I'm not happy yes, with that at all. Elsewhere. Yeah, but there's no Bible verse which says Britain or America is this. I mean, look, why didn't you get back to me next time and you show me where the Bible says that Anglo and America are the seventh head of the satanic wild beast? Could you do that? Well, but the, the revelation book does discuss that in detail. But just discussing it. I've got Christadelphian books, I've got Mormon books, they discuss a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just because they discuss, discuss stuff is not no, proof, is not it evidence. The context of Bible, it discusses it in the context of Bible prophecy and also matches it up with Daniel. But there's nothing in Biblical prophecy which says Anglo-America is the seventh satanic head of the wild beast. No, but it doesn't, it doesn't say Rome either, and it doesn't say, some of them don't say... Hang on, hang on. Daniel's hang image. Let's go back to Revelation 17 verse 10. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. Revelation chapter 17, verse 10. Now, it's talking about seven kings or seven mountains, because mountains are sometimes used in the Bible of reference prophetically to kingdom or, or to kingdom rule. When it says five have fallen, that's five nations which persecuted God's people. Yeah. Now, the Incas and the Aztecs and the Japanese did not persecute God's, God's people 2,000 years yep. ago, yeah? Yeah. So it's probable that Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, are the reference to the five heads. Yes, because they all persecuted God's people. Exactly. And when it, it says there are also seven kings, five have fallen, one is. When it says one is, that has to be Rome. Yes, correct. 
Right, so we've sorted out who the six heads are. There's six kingdoms that persecute God's people, and the seventh is obviously Rome. When John wrote that, one is. He's, he's not talking about the, the Incas or the Aztecs or the Japanese or the Chinese. He's talking about Rome. The question is, what is the yeah. seventh head? Because it mentions a seventh, and then it talks about an eighth in verse 11 that comes out of the seventh. Yes, that's it. That's the eighth mission. Right. Could you pr- that, perhaps we could go on to that? Because I think that this is something where, when we speak again, I'd be grateful if you could prove that to me and, and show me that the seventh head is Anglo America yeah, sure. and show me that the eighth head is the United Nations. Because I would be of the opinion that the eighth head is the Antichrist. And he works with a confederation of kings who would be the seventh head. And then he overpowers the, the um, seventh head. And he uh, uh, takes rule unto himself all alone and becomes the eighth head. That would be my interpretation of this. So I don't think it's happened yet, which is why I don't think we've seen the seventh head and we haven't seen the eighth head. But if I'm right, wrong... There's a, whole, there's a whole bit in the Revelation book about that. Well, perhaps you, perhaps you could prove to me that the seventh head is Anglo-America and prove to me that the eighth head is the, is the United Nations. And I, I mentioned the UN because the Watchtower joined the UN in 1992. They took out NGO membership in 1992. And I'm thinking, because you're so against the UN, you claim the UN is of the devil, it's the eighth head of the satanic wild beast... Why then did you join the UN? Why did you take out NGO membership in 1992? And... What, what, what membership is that, sorry? NGO, Non-Governmental Organisation Membership of the United Nations. I'm not aware we are members of that. Um, in 1992, I got a letter from the UN. In 1992, you took out membership um, of the United Nations as an NGO member. And... This was just four. Must have been a reason for that, there must have been a, a business reason for that. Why don't you look into it and get back to me? Yeah, it wouldn't be to. It would not be to support the UN. Well, that's you for sure. well, you did because you had to comply with that NGO membership by publishing uh, articles in your magazine supporting the aims and the ideals of the UN, which you did normally in the Awake magazine. But to be an NGO membership, you have to publicly um, support the UN and its aims and ideals. And that's what you did in, in the Awake, uh, usually the Awake, but once, once in the Watchtower. And you left the UN the day after a Guardian article. The British Guardian newspaper exposed the fact that you were members of the UN, whilst at the same time you taught the UN was the satanic, seventh, eh, sorry, the, the satanic eighth head of the wild beast. And they thought yeah. that this was their article. They did a series of three articles. They basically said that this was hypocrisy. And you left the very next day. The Guardian article was the 8th of October 2001. So if you look okay. it up, the Guardian article, 8th of October 2001, you left the very next yeah. day. But you're still yeah. associated with the UN today. You still have an affiliation with the UN today. Um, through OSCE, Organisation for Security and Cooperation in Europe. Yeah, so that's different from supporting something and saying it is... Like, the religions of this earth, including the Pope, have said that the United Nations is God's representative on earth to bring about peace. They have said that. We, we would say completely the opposite. Right, but but my question is, why did you join the UN for nine years between 1992 and 2001? And why is two of your sub-organisations, because the Watchtower Society has about 100 smaller companies that are associated with the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. There's about 100 small companies. Now, one of them is called the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses, and that has been, for many years, members of OSCE. OSCE. Yeah, but is that actually us? Or is that somebody... It's you. It's a sub-company of either the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York or a sub-company of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. I don't know one? which. How sure are that, are you? Or somebody, you know, because... Jehovah's Christian Witnesses isn't an organisation that we use. We use Jehovah's Witnesses. 
you have over a hundred companies. There are a hundred companies associated with the parent companies of Jehovah's Witnesses, known as the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York and Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of Pennsylvania. So, so you, you know, OSCE is another United Nations NGO. It's made up of parliamentarians across Europe, and these members of parliament from across Europe, they meet um, and they discuss peace. It's, it's supposed to be an organization that promotes peace across Europe, but today it's very much uh, um, promoting political correctness. And so what's happened is various extreme ultra-Orthodox Jewish groups Scientologists and Jehovah's Witnesses have all joined OSCE and what they're doing is they're working with these parliamentarians to try and change the laws so that if you disagree with these religious groups it can be a hate crime like Islamophobia and you go straight to prison if you just disagree. For instance the conversation we're having now, you know, if a policeman were to listen into, into this, um, what they're trying to achieve is I would go to prison because you can't question somebody who is um, uh, a religious person. And so what various religions are trying to do, ultra-Orthodox Jews, Scientology and Jehovah's Witnesses, is through OSCE change the laws, extend hate crimes to such an extent that if you just go up to a Jehovah's Witness or a Scientologist at their cart, or even just try and question an, an ultra-Orthodox Jew, and you just ask questions and maybe disagree with one or two things politely, you go to prison because it becomes a hate crime, basically just yeah, to disagree no, yeah, with them. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and they're working with parliamentarians. OSCE is made up of parliamentarians. And these ultra-Orthodox Jews, Scientology and Jehovah's Witnesses are working with them. So here's another instance where Jehovah's Witnesses are working with the governments. They've become members... Yeah, but of OSC. I, I'm going to talk to you more closely, and I don't know if I'll have time to do that. All right. But the, we, we would not support the United Nations in its endeavours to think that it is God's organisation on earth to bring about peace. If we can help to change the law to help our people worship Jehovah in the proper way, great. And we do that when the European Court of Human Rights are fighting for our rights for our brothers in Russia and places like that. Because all they're doing is preaching the Bible and getting locked away and called terrorists. So, if we can help to change the law through legal means, that's what we need to do. So well, there's a difference between that and supporting an organisation, per se. Well, no, they're actually members. Jehovah's, the organization, the European Association of Jehovah's Christian Witnesses, which is owned by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of either New York or Pennsylvania, is a member of OSCE. And OSCE, Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, is itself a member of the United Nations. It's an agent of the United Nations. It is a United Nations NGO. Yeah. So that's not supporting. But they're members. They're members of OSCE. Yes, so that doesn't mean you're supporting the aims. That means you're trying to help to get in there to change the world to help your people. Right, but they I've got lists of conferences run by OSCE that are attended by groups of ultra-Orthodox ultra Jews, Scientologists and Jehovah's yep. Witnesses. Yeah, I think one of the Jehovah's support, Witnesses... That means, you, that means you're in there to try and change the law from a legal perspective, yes, to help I, against hate crime, etc. Like yeah. I think that Paul Gillis or Gillies, Paul Gillies or Paul yeah, Gillis is I one of the Paul. Jehovah's. Paul, yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you speak to him about it? Because um, maybe if you speak to him about it and get back to me in a month or so, we can we can chat again. Because I'm very puzzled by this. It really puzzles yeah, me. Yeah, I mean, well, there's a difference. You see, you can be a member of that organisation, but you to try and bring about, so Paul's heavily involved in the European Court of Human Rights. Like our people are getting locked up for just owning a Bible in Russia. Our Bible has been banned in Russia, and it's exactly the same as your Bible. And we have to do things to get in to change the law. So actually, we're not supporting any organisation, we're actually fighting, <coughs> excuse me, fighting for our people's rights against these organisations, if that makes sense. 
It is sponsored most of us. Well, let, let me say that I would disagree with um, President Putin uh, locking up Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, I'd much yeah. rather see him actually confronting Jehovah's Witnesses on the streets and proving them wrong, and then yes, proving no. that, that, that yeah. the Jehovah's Witness position is wrong in debate, than just um, arresting them and locking them up. But anyway, um, perhaps if I leave that with you, I am puzzled because if, if you're supposed to have no part of the world and have no association with governments, and governmental organisations, then I'm really curious by your past membership of yeah, the UN what, what and your current membership not, of OSCE. Yeah, it, what it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a financial support or anything like that. The reason we are members of that organisation is we're trying to establish human rights in Europe, which the Russians are ignoring, but other countries are as well now. Well, look, if we've I had leave that... issues in France, we've yeah. had issues in Britain, we've had issues all over, yeah. and it's to do with the abuse of human rights. And we have to be a member of an organisation to try and get that sorted, so mm. be it for now. But it doesn't mean we're supporting that organisation. What mm. it means is that's just the vehicle to help bring about... For instance, I'm, I work in hospitals uh, to help some of our patients that are in there, Jehovah's Witnesses, OK? This is just an yes. illustration, Robert. Yes, yes. Now, I am a member of the chaplaincy in that hospital because I represent the faith group of Jehovah's Witnesses that come in in emergencies, etc. Yes. But it doesn't mean that I'm an active member or support that chaplaincy. We don't. We don't get involved in interfaith or anything like that. So there's a difference. I need to be a member of the chaplaincy to have my contact details registered to help our people. But it doesn't mean I'm supporting the chaplaincy. Mm. Perhaps so there's it, a, there's yes. a difference. But, um, perhaps if the Russian government and the British government were to know what you've said... Um, and I've been told by Jehovah's Witnesses at the carts also that, you know, every Christian church on earth, every branch of Christendom, but not the Jehovah's Witness religion is of the devil. And you've also said that every government in the world is also of the devil, including Her yeah. Majesty's government and the office of the presidency of the United States and the office of the monarch of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. You've said they're the seventh satanic head of the satanic wild beast. I think if the governments of the world knew that, I think they would not allow you onto a chaplaincy team. I think they'd have nothing to do with you. No, I don't. They do. It's, um, it's just one of these things. I mean, they might have the same view, personally. Well, they would have the same view that they're of the devil. Well, not themselves. <laughs> no, I don't think. I don't. I don't think no. they would. I no, don't I think mean, they understand your beliefs. I think they think that yes, you're just another religious... That, we, can, can I just finish, we, David? I, I think they think that you're just another um, group like the Methodists and the um, yes, Pentecostals they do. They do. and the Anglicans yeah. and the Baptists, and you're not because you're saying that every government on earth is of the devil and every Christian religion, um, it, the Watchtower, Bible and Tract Society excluded, but every Christian religion, Baptist, Methodist, Anglican, Pentecostal, all of it is of the devil. And I, I think the governments um, would ban you if, if they actually knew that. Well, the books aren't there for them to read. Yeah, but they... They're, they're, you know, they're not going to do that. They're, they're not, they're not going to do that. And I guess when they've spoken to Jehovah's Witnesses, um, they've had double talk and double speak, and they've just been, been confused. Um, just because somebody well, is, is, a, is, is a barrister or a lawyer or a high court judge doesn't mean that... Um, a member of a religious group cannot bamboozle them and confuse them and make them think that black is white and white is black because it's in the religion's interest. No, I, I know that, but this is... We, we quite openly say what we say. Which is that every um, government of the world is of the devil, isn't it? That, that's, that's what well, you're saying. What, no, what we're saying is, is the devil controls the world and these governments happen to be part of that organisation. So does the devil control even if it's indirectly, every government of the world, including Her Majesty's government? What we believe is that the devil creates an air. The, the Bible talks about the spirit of the world. The devil creates an air in this system that is a, an influence on everybody, even ourselves as Jehovah's Witnesses, and it's something that we have to fight. So that air from the devil and his demons is there, and that air of materialism, like, whatever you want to call it, you know, immorality, etc., all these different things. Yeah. And yeah. against God's will, 
Mm. That air is there, and that puts pressure on me as an individual and other people as individuals. But, but, it depends but, how we react to that, and the governments mm. are under that same air as we are, but they choose to do what they do. And so they are working under the devil. I mean, you have, you've said that, haven't you? So have other Jehovah's Witnesses. Every government of the world is of the devil. And on page 252, you particularly focus on the Anglo-American, Anglo and America being two governments that are particularly satanic, because you say they're the seventh head of the satanic wild beast. Yeah, because they have persecuted our people seriously in the 20th century. What on earth has the American government done to Jehovah's Witnesses? Well, that would be a real research point for you, quite a lot, because I'll what tell you'll find you. is a lot of, I'll, what you'll find a lot no. of Supreme Court victories no. by Jehovah's no. Witnesses in the American Supreme Court for persecution of Jehovah's Witnesses, including imprisonment and beating. No, no, this... You'll find, that, you'll find that in the 20th century, a lot of them, actually. This goes back to Judge Rutherford being arrested in 1918 and spending nine no, months no, in prison. No, no, it's, when, that, when, that. when he, and I, I, I realise this, when Judge Rutherford and the other seven brothers, because I think it was eight or nine in total, when they yeah, were released from yeah, prison yeah. in 1919, Rutherford had a chip on his shoulder. He hated the American government, and because Britain was a major world power at the time, he hated the British as well. And so in his books, and I've got books like Enemies and Religion, page after page after page is abuse where he says all the religions and all the governments of the world are of the devil. He, he just insult after insult after insult. Because the guy had a chip on his shoulder about, because of the no, American even, government putting him in prison. Then, Robert, if, you, if you look into the, the history books, <coughs> excuse me, you will find a lot of Supreme Court victories since the Second World War. So Rutherford was dead. And where our people have been put in prison in the US and there's been umpteen Supreme Court victories to get freedom of worship in a land that's supposed to be the land of the free. Which you believe is run by Satan, because you believe the Anglo-American power is the seventh head of the satanic wild beast, so you believe the American government, the office of the presidency, is under the power or under the influence of the devil? Under the influence of, yes. And you believe the British Crown is also under the influence of the devil? Yeah, every government, we're not picking up... Yeah, but every, you believe that of the British yeah. Crown also, don't you? Um, well, it's every government. Including the British so, Crown? Including everybody. Including the British Crown? Well, everybody. All right. All right. Well, look, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been lovely speaking to you. Um, I have yeah, scribbled down some notes and I, I, I will look at things. Maybe we can talk again in in a month's no time, but give me a few weeks to do some research on the issues that you've raised. Yeah, no worries. All right. Well, thank you very much Thanks for your so time. Much. Bye. Bye.